Hi, this is chapter five, the risk and return. This is the first clip of that. So we are going to learn the relation between risk and return for this chapter. First of all, the first thing we have to do is that we want to know what kind of return we have to um, can compute. So the first thing we're gonna learn is the HPR, which is the holding period return. So this is the returns over a given investment period. So it may be monthly, it may be daily, it may be annually. I mean, this is the rate of returns for your investment horizon. So how to compute this is quite simple. So if you buy, say for example, stock here at this price, PB, so price of buy, and you sell it, PS, so sell price, and then you receive the dividend, cash dividend, during your investment horizon. Your, your income has first part is dividend and second part is the price difference, right? This price difference, we call it capital gain. So, this is the capital gain, this is the dividend, and divide by our investment seed money, the buy price, then you're gonna have holding period returns. So this holding period return has two components. This is, so one component is from capital gain, which is the PS minus PB divided by PB price by, this is called capital gain yield. The second part is now dividend part, so dividend divided by price of by price, then we call it dividend yield. So that's the return from capital gain, the first one, and the second one is the return from dividend. So this is the example. What is the HPR for a share of stock that was purchased for $25? Sold for $27 and distributed $1.25 in dividends. Now again, we have two components. One is the capital gain, the other is the dividend, right? So you have buy, so you buy here. So this is buy, okay? This is sell, right? You buy $25, so you pay 25 bucks here and sell $27, so you, your return is what? two dollars that's the capital gain and the dividend will be 125 so holding period return is 27 sale price minus 25 which is buy price plus the dividend to the uh, one dollar 25 divided by 25 dollars right and then that's the 325 divided by 25 so it's going to be what? Uh, 13%, I'm sorry, 13%, right? It's going to be 13%. So you make 13% return for your investment. That's how to compute the holding period returns. So there are three different types of returns. The first one is arithmetic returns. Arithmetic return is the return that we can compute using simple average. So for example here, so this is the example. Now $10, $25, I mean 10%, 25%, negative 20%, and 20% is the holding period returns. So to get arithmetic returns average equals to 10% plus 25% now minus 20% right so that's the negative 20% and then plus 20% divided by just the number of observation 4 which is now this is gone, so it's 0 0.35 divided by 4. So 
it's going to be eight point seven five percent, right? Okay, so that's the returns you're gonna have eight point seven five percent. All right. Okay, now see the next one. Geometric average. Geometric average is now uh, the difference between the arithmetic average and the geometric average is for geometric average, we assume that we compound compound interest. So arithmetic return, the problem of arithmetic return is we don't really uh, assume that the interest is compounded. Now the geometric average, we assume that the return is compounding. So you can compute the geometric return by using the formula here is one plus, so it's a product of I goes to N and one plus return I, okay, and then part of 1 over N minus 1. So if you use this example again, number 2, geometric returns. Now we have 4 returns, right? So it's a 1 plus 0 0.1, 10%, times 1 plus 25%, right? Plus, now 1 minus 20% because we have negative 20% return, I mean times 1 plus 20%, and then part to the 1 over 4 minus 1, which will be 7.19%. So this is actually the returns uh, per quarter here if you compound the interest. Okay, so that's the returns that compound interest.